I'm on my way to Stonehenge for the Summer Solstice Festival, an annual event that attracts thousands of people. As soon as I found out that this was a thing, I knew I had to go. I've been obsessed with witches and paganism for my entire life, and this seemed like it would be the ultimate magical experience. I was even more intrigued when I found out that in past years, the party had gotten really out of hand. I wanted to find out what happens when you mix a large group of drunk people with a bunch of actual wizards. In the parking lot outside the festival, I ran into a pack of angry druids. English heritage money grabbers! This is a spiritual event! Let's keep it that way! They were protesting against English heritage for charging for parking this year. Refuse to pay! Don't pay to pray! It seems that their tactics involve encouraging other people not to pay, listening to dubstep and yelling, and I'm wondering about the efficacy of that, but they seem extremely passionate. Their leader is a man named King Arthur Pendragon, who was leading the protest from his motorcycle. Can you outline the basis of your argument with English heritage? Well, it's quite simple. We've been coming here for the last 16 years, and we've been going down there to manifest our religious beliefs. But all of a sudden, they've decided to charge us. You wouldn't do it at a mosque, you wouldn't do it at a synagogue, you wouldn't do it at a church. Why should we be expected to pay to pray? English heritage, on the other hand, say these charges are simply meant to encourage carpooling. I know you've been very involved in doing the ritual every year. Who's yeah. going to lead it if you can't get in? Don't know. One of the other druids will have to lead it because I won't be able to. But in spite of their protests, thousands of people were coming into the festival and things were starting to get wild inside of the stones. <laughs> From what I can see, it's a, it's a man in a red top hat with a GoPro attached to it and a saxophone, which is not what I was expecting. It was pretty bizarre being inside the stone circle. I couldn't really figure out who was celebrating what. The sun hadn't even set, and there was already a noticeable contrast between the people who had come to Stonehenge to glorify nature and the people who were just there to party. Do you identify as a druid? Yeah, really my identity is of the earth work for the earth, that's my work, and someone like this and something like this just connects you to earth and spirit and your hearts, and that's what we're here for, really. It was a very striking juxtaposition, I think, between the people who come here to have fun and the people who come here because they see it as a sacred space. How do you navigate that? Everyone's here because they're drawn here for some reason, and if they're getting out of it and partying, they're still here. And, you know, and it's kind of sometimes when you take drink and drugs and all the rest of it, you're looking for something, you're looking for a spiritual connection. After the sunset, things became significantly more debaucherous. I mean, like, how did they get that stone on top of those two stones? Incredible. The teenagers have taken over the middle of Stonehenge. There are Three teenagers just standing in the middle. Someone's playing a bongo on the ground and they're kind of just like screaming really bad 90s songs. Probably a quarter of the teenagers here are vaping and many of them are vaping on top of Stonehenge. Do you want to talk to us really quickly for Vice? Do you want to answer a few questions really quickly for Vice? Uh, we're tripping. You're tripping. So you don't want to talk. I think I can socially have it. A few feet away from the center of the stones, by a rock called the Heel Stone, some of the more spiritual festival goers were celebrating in their own way. Right now they're touching that one little nubby stone and singing. <laughs> How would you describe your approach versus the approach that we see um, over there? I suppose it's like finding the balance between the flow of the masculine energy, which is like, yeah, which is great, you know, all the drumming and all the partying and all, but I think people forget to go in for a minute. It's like feeling what the stones actually have to teach us rather than what we have to like pour out on everything. Shalom. 
Although King Arthur never made it in, I'd heard there was another important druid performing rituals. This one guy looks exactly like Gandalf. So can you tell me a little bit more about the central beliefs of druidism? It's understanding nature yes. to 100% degree. And is there like any kind of like hierarchy or anything in it? Yes. Uh, there is. Because you, you look like you're on the top of the hierarchy. Well, I'm Merlin. We're here to celebrate the longest day, mm -hmm. which uh, has just occurred. Yes. And last night was the shortest night. So we know now that the, the days are going to get shorter. So are you doing any kind of ceremony tonight? Yeah, we do naming ceremony, like a christening. Can I get a new name? Well, you can have any name you like. Merlin's wife. No. Um, oh, who's Merlin? That's called Mer Mrs. Merlin. Mrs. Merlin? <laughs> no, who is it? Nimway, right? Nimway. Are you ready to relinquish your name as Callie? Yes. And are you ready to take on the name Nimway? Yes. You are now Nimway. Rise as Nimway. There we go. I feel like a new woman. You are now Nimway. <laughs> We're going to have to change the title card. <laughs> Back at the center of Stonehenge, the bongo-inspired rave was thriving with a spiritual significance of its own. Tell me about your experience at Stonehenge. It's spiritual, there's love, and there's little fairies. <laughs> Is that because of drugs or because of Stonehenge? That's because of all of it. As the sunrise drew nearer, both the pagans and non-pagans came together to watch the solstice. As Merlin's honorary wife, I obviously watched it by his side. So is this the best place to stand for solstice in your experience? Uh, this is the uh, optimum position to uh, view the sunrise, definitely. Do you say anything or pray or anything when the sun rises? Uh, we usually say all hail to the sun. There's the sunrise, do you see me? Yeah, there, yes. There it is, there you go. All hail the sun. All hail the sun. All hail the sun. All hail the sun. That shows the noise. The Solstice Festival is over. I have been here for 12 hours straight and I'm extremely tired. I think the conflict that I imagined happening between like the festival parties, actually, you know what, fuck those guys. I was gonna say it wasn't as bad as I thought, but no. Some people are like extremely annoying here. Um, <laughs> but I really, really like the Druids. You know, I really appreciate like the deep spiritual connection they feel here. Watching the sunrise is amazing. So being able to sit there and like surrounded by people who really found meaning in it, you can't like not find that significant, I think. I feel like I'm in Game of Thrones. Do you, does everyone else have a cloak? <laughs> Honestly, having the cape on changes the whole thing. <laughs> I feel like a sorcerer. Like, that's so cool. You just like marry someone and you just wear capes together and have a nice life. I gotta give his cape back. <laughs>